Hello fellow AI enthusiasts, hello fellow chat GPT enthusiasts, hello fellow trading enthusiasts. My name is Chris White from Beyond Backtesting Blog. I'm an AI enthusiast, I'm a chat GPT enthusiast, I'm also a trading in markets enthusiast, very interested in trading in markets. And I'm also, and my blog, speaking of which, my Beyond Backtesting is named because it's dedicated to trading in markets and I will be returning it to trading in markets exclusive focus in the near future and I will be creating a Twitter dedicated exclusively to chat GPT, to AI, to low code, no code, and uh, also productivity and things of that nature. Uh, I'm going to be dedicating a Twitter, developing a Twitter exclusively dedicated to those topics as well. Uh, we'd already be, have done that, but I was not able to create a new account on Twitter. It's not working for me. Uh, <clears throat> I'm also a senior software engineer with uh, decades of experience. I uh, developed my first software from a very early age. And I'm also an AI artist. Now, interestingly, or maybe not, but, uh, or, Kind of fascinating is that to myself is well i also do some digital art as well some traditional art you know with the stylus and stuff and uh, photoshop basically but and i do have a twitter dedicated to that i'm not currently doing AI art but um, i was really pushing some of the, the boundaries in that and interestingly uh, when you're prompt hacking for AI art, it's very similar to prompt hacking for uh, ChatGPT because for generating code, uh, because in both cases you're prompt hacking, right? One, you're prompt hacking for art, the other, you're prompt hacking to generate, to get some kind of code or some kind of response from the AI. So it's kind of interesting that how the prompt hacking has these, uh, can have very different functionalities, right? Now, I expect that to continue to be the case where maybe prompt hacking in the future, you're using prompt hacking to make music, prompt hacking to make art, prompt hacking to make uh, code. <clears throat> now, let me get to the topic on hand here. I'll try to keep this to about 12 minutes. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use, uh, how to use um, Auto Hotkey to automate some processes within ChatGPT. Now, I'm also going to talk about my experience. If you already know how to do that, okay, stay with me because I'm going to talk about my experience of using ChatGPT to create the auto hotkey scripts or try to. And I'm going to share what my experience was and give you some tips on how you can use ChatGPT when you're programming and some some pitfalls to watch out for and how maybe to get a better result. So <clears throat> one of the let me just share the basic need for this is that. Uh, what I do is, you know, every time I want to start up the chat GPT or often I'll go to here, which is, was my, this is my multimodal, which is no longer works. And then I'll scroll down to here, which I posted my super snapshot, which does work with this December 15th update. And I'll click on this, just paste it. Maybe I should be using some kind of snippets, uh, solutions, uh, gets, get solutions. I think there's another, maybe a better way of doing this, but then I'll scroll down to here. And then I, what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll just select and I'll copy and paste all this text in all this stuff into the chat GPT window. Okay. And I have to do that every time I start chat GPT or most times. And we can see that's a repetitive test. So what I've created, I'll go ahead and, and, and show you what I've created here. Let me um, move this so you can see this. What I've created is a way to basically have the text expanded out without me having to do that every time. So I've, I've, I've put that using the auto hotkey and what I do is, is I basically type in dot boot space and I can hit enter here and uh, this will be, this is basically the boot up to get uh, ChatGPT to play nice, right? Uh, and so <coughs> uh, that's what we're building, right? This ability to do that. I'm also sure there's a few other things I've built with this as well. So I've also built the ability to, um, to also do, we can also do, that's a large expansion, right? But you can also do smaller expansions such as I can do dot dot D, R, and I can expand that to extremely brief, uh, like to extremely very brief mode. So I can have a commands that I can feed into auto to chat GPT. I can code these expansions commands. So I can say enter, and it's already in a brief, brief mode. So we can, uh, uh, so it's not going to uh, uh, work, but uh, it, that's a, this is a, as an aside, this, this is like a, when you chain, when we deal with uh, things like language models, uh, and I don't pretend to even know a very little, even the smallest amount of, about them, but uh, you, you can't necessarily tell them what to do. They don't necessarily listen because they kind of statistically, probab you know, probabilistically make text, generate text. Um, and I found, and actually I was talking about my art experience, 
uh, which you know, was Dolly and, and disco diffusion and stable diffusion, uh, that sometimes you can chain words together and it makes it like a power word. <coughs> so that's where that comes from. But notice that expands within the, uh, you know, that expands there. But the other way to do this is you can also, let's say you have, uh, I don't always need the full boot up code, but there's, all, there's often a, a set of uh, commands that may be very helpful. So I can actually uh, do this and have them expand as a large block that I can just say enter, and then I can allow uh, the chat GPT will understand what these things mean. I can just say, I will use .s to instruct you, and it will know that. So there's two different ways of doing it, right? You can use the, the expansion capability to expand the text, or you can just uh, expand a block, a large block. And <clears throat> so I'm going to show you both uh, ways of doing that. Now, before you get started, you will need AutoHotKey, and this is the website for AutoHotKey. It's www.autohotkey.com. It's a free program. This is what it looks like you can download it. I believe it's open source as well, and uh, install this on your Windows 11 uh, computer, and you know it will allow you to run scripts and things from this. Now, one thing I did install as well, which is an editor. Uh, let me say one other thing. This is a robotic process automation software. This is open source. This is free. There's also, for Windows 11 users, I believe, at least if you're, I believe it's for everyone, but I know that it, if, if you're like on the uh, office or whatever, you can get the Power Automate desktop, uh, which is a very nice robotic process automation software too for desktop. The problem is there's no way to trigger those, um, there's no way to trigger their the automations within the desktop, within the, win so this is much more suitable for this. Um, <clears throat> There are also robotic process automation softwares that you can, you know, commercial, but they can be very expensive. So having auto hotkey is just is kind of like the most ideal thing for this. Now, um, which is the downside, right? You'll see all these nice automatic uh, RPA programs, and you'll see this, the price is very, can be very expensive. Now, um, the other thing I, I got here, let me just, um, the other th program I, uh, I doubt that you won't, you won't is Site. For auto hotkey, this is an ID integrated development environment. You don't have to have this. You could use a notepad. You could use Visual Studio Code. There's different ways. This is what I use. Site for auto hotkey. It has some uh, nice functionality here um, that you could also use as a notepad or, or Visual Studio Code. Once you have auto hotkey installed, right? I'm going to show you this. So this is site for auto hotkey, and this is uh, the code. And I'll walk you through this uh, briefly. Uh, but one thing that we'll go through, this is some bullet point stuff. Um, it, it, you know, you can read what it does here. This is a more efficient, kind of like sets it up to be more efficient. Just this stuff here, single instance, so you don't have multiple instances running. And then the, the really the thing here we do is, is I load in this, uh, this uh, text file with this one line command, very simple. And, and this loads it into this variable called boot text, right? And then I load in this, uh, this other one into abbreviations. Now, uh, I would like to say, I would like when I said that, hey, using ChatGPT was worked really good. It was able to code all this stuff up for me. It did not work very well at all. Uh, ChatGPT um, was, you know, much less efficient than Google, much less efficient than the documentation. Uh, it was kind of disappointing because it's my second test. I'm actually utilizing it and were in a for a task I wasn't really an expert on. I've done a little bit with this, but not very much. And the other task where it fell on was uh, I tried to develop some. Uh, PowerShell scripts, and that's not something I do. And it also did not, it uh, performed very poorly compared to Google on that as well. <clears throat> it actually gave me too much code. I had to remove some code to get it to work, so it spit out too much, too much, and, and the extra code it spit out actually broke it. Um, in this case, the code it spit out did not work at all. And I want to talk a moment about that and how to kind of redirect it. If you're doing something like this auto hotkey and it's, you're spitting out code that's not working, which was my experience, I could not get it to correct itself, which is was, was um, unfortunate. But what I did, I got a little better start. If you reset the thread and then I went to the documentation and let me show you this. This is how I really had developed it was the documentation was pretty much more helpful than the, you know, unfortunately than the chat GPT. But uh, you know, I, I did a little bit, a little bit of digging in the documentation, and I found these things called hot strings, and I was able to kind of dig into this. And once I reset the thread and gave it the keyword hot strings, I got better code from it. So if you get off on a bad foot with ChatGPT, often it may be better just to reset it, give it a different starting point, and see how it does, because it doesn't often do very well correcting itself. Um, 
So even with the heartstrings, I had some, uh, let me show you the code again. I had some, uh, some problems uh, because the, you know, the way that you, these are called expanders, I believe, hot strings or expanders. And the first time I tried to expand, you know, this is what I'm trying to expand here, all this code, um, you know, all this, um, <clears throat> the first time I tried to do that, right, I have different, um, you know, some different symbols and things in here. Well, it completely barfed. And you have to be very careful if you're doing that, right? And it, it put my computer into a bad state. It, I don't know if it left the shift key on or something, but uh, it, it the sometimes modifier key it left some kind of modifier keys on, and it and it went into some kind of mode where it tried to like uh, you know run actual operations like you know control operations stuff. And uh, in the documentation, there's some t some text about different modes of pasting things, and there's a raw mode or or copying things. There's a raw mode. There's a text mode. But even with the different modes, it still screwed everything up when I tried to just, uh, when I tried to uh, paste, you know, the code. Let me show you that. So what I did was, is I put it in this snippets directory. I just copied and pasted it into this boot text. And when I tried to, uh, to, to get that to top in using the sync keys, it screwed everything up, right? So um, what I actually ended up doing was having it copy and paste the text in which worked as you've seen it worked very well so that's just an FYI if you have a short text or text about any you know clean text then you can use the expansions and I'll show you all the different ways here but that was one thing I discovered as well is that instead of having to expand it out I had to go and use the uh, hot strings with a command which was the control paste and that worked very well so let me show you what we got here um, this was some while I was testing it out and uh, this was actually a sin I'll not delete that I'll show you that actually but this was when it this this code caused it to go crazy, um, you know, when I was trying to paste it in. So um, what I actually ended up doing was um, so this code, right? It loads in the the boot text into boot text variable, those in the abbreviations, and then um, what I can do is there are basically I'm showing you uh, two different ways of of utilizing the uh, auto hotkeys here. So one way is you can just go ahead and you know, you can use a command that you can use, utilize and have auto hotkeys expand out the text, and then you can pop that into uh, GPT uh, or ChatGPT. The other way is you could um, utilize, so this is, a, let me explain this, this is dot, dot .br is your expander. You type it, if you type that in with a space, this is what it will expand out to, okay? The other way is to, um, again, to have it, uh, to create a text file with multiple instructions uh, uh, and have that expanded out and to send the command to basically put that to the clipboard and then paste it. So that's what I do here is uh, basically I, I set the clipboard equal to the uh, to the uh, boot text and then I send that with a control V. And again, I needed to do that because of the, uh, if, if I didn't, I got all kinds of uh, odd behavior, right? Here's another example of that, right? Where um, I am <coughs> using uh, loading in abbreviations file, which I'm going to show you that real quickly. So here's the abbreviations file, and you know that's that's what I'm loading in here. Um, uh, and uh, so I can uh, pop in multiple commands, uh, same concept, right, as with the boot up code. One important thing with auto hot uh, with auto hot key is your scripts run in the background, and so it's nice to put a reloader key on this. And I knew this; I just knew a very little bit of auto hot key, but I didn't know this. And uh, Chat GPT was actually able to put understand this and add this code in, right? Um, and it made this little script to reload it. So this what this says: if I press Control J, it will reload because it's already running in the background, right? And uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, uh, you get it. You know, so so that's um, that's going to make things I think a lot more productive for myself working in ChatGPT. It's going to allow me to uh, when I create commands and scripts and little templates and things. And uh, I, I really like the fact that I took a little extra time to find out how to put this into a different uh, into a different text file because, as you've seen, this is a pretty massive amount. Uh, you know, this is uh, a lot of text here, and I don't need that uh, polluting my code. Uh, all that stuff, and so um, you know, I, you can expand this. You can use this to, to insert dates, auto expanded dates. 
you could just use this to expand uh, fields. Uh, there's going to be a lot more usual, uh, uses for this, I uh, can imagine, uh, that can be discovered as one thinks about how one could utilize this. But just offhand, you've got, you can do expansions for commands, you can do expansions for startup boot up code for tasks, you can do uh, form pacing, you can do dates, and scraping will be another topic for another day. I hope it helps. Uh, thank you.